This is five on your side at six, focused on you. Battlehawks fans were up early to tailgate outside of the Battle Dome this morning. It was a little bit chillier out there for the tailgate, but that didn't keep these football fans away from their favorite team. Good evening, I'm Holden Kerwicki. Brent Solomon has the night off. The cooler temperatures make it feel a lot more like we are, in fact, in April. Weather First Meteorologist Gary Frank is here to tell us how long these temps are going to stick around. Gary, hopefully a while. Yeah, well, for a couple of days, we're definitely going to be dealing with some cooler mornings. In fact, it, you know, it's been a while since we've had the heat on. You know, I didn't turn it on last night, and I know it was a little chilly going downstairs this morning, right? I think the next couple of days, we'll probably see that. Clouds are starting to increase just a little bit here, as you'll see the big picture to the south. That's where a pretty good storm system is that's providing some good soaking rain. We're away from that as snow is to our west, and of course, that's not going to impact us. But it is just indicative of how much colder it is at least off to the west and even to the north, whereas in the 40s to the north. That air is settling in, and the rest of the evening will be back into the 40s, despite cloud cover. I think over the next several hours, we'll watch uh, temperatures get cool enough where Sunday morning a frost advisory is in place for much of our area. How cold it gets as we head into the next 12 hours, why it's just one of two days that we're monitoring for colder air before our next chance for warmer air and even severe weather down the road. All right, Gary, something to keep an eye on. Thank you. A miracle wedding is underway right now in Jefferson County. Today, a ceremony that almost didn't happen came together. The last two days have truly been the calm after the storm. Thursday's severe weather caused widespread damage, including in Eureka, Missouri. Winds ripped the roofs off of barns at Brookdale Farms right as a wedding rehearsal was getting underway. Our Travis Cummings highlights how the venue was quickly able to turn things around for the couple's big day. I'm not getting in my dress until 2.15. Okay. I'm ready to have all my favorite people in one building um, and partying and celebrating me and my husband. This bride-to-be is keeping her cool. I have no emotions right now. <laughs> I'm um, just waiting for all of that to hit. I think all the chaos the last couple days was enough. The last 48 hours for Taylor Jonas and her wedding party have been a whirlwind after severe weather almost stole the big day. I did have one of my bridesmaids text me and tell me that there's going to be bad storms uh, between five and seven and both my soon to be husband and I were both like y'all overreact to storms. Things are going to be fine. The night of the rehearsal dinner, things seemed to take a turn for the worse at Brookdale Farms in Eureka. A tornado in the area rolled in with gusts up to 100 miles per hour, and those strong winds took a portion of Jonas's reception hall's roof off. Well, we tried to remain positive. You know, we tried to assure the bride that we were going to do everything in our our you know possible means to make this day happen for her. She had her heart set on Silo Point. James Vavak immediately got his contractors on the line. So we had to bring in a temporary roof uh, to match as closely as possible to the original roof. We had a lot of water that got into the building, a lot of insulation that came down. We got the green light at 9 a.m. this morning for the temporary occupancy permit to allow the wedding to take place here today. The chairs are in place and the tables are set. There's nothing that the guests have to do different. We don't have to do anything different either. Speaking of the roof. We are going to blow the roof off in a different way. <laughs> Travis Cummings, five on your side. Brookdale Farms is still working with its insurance company to assess the damage, but their main goal was getting Silo Point open to fulfill that couple's dream. Right now, police are working to learn more about a deadly shooting in St. Louis City. Police say a 29 year old man was shot s multiple times near Aldine and Spring Avenues around 1030 last night. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Ten hours before that, another shooting happened in the same area. Two people told police they got into a fight, and when they tried to leave, someone fired shots into their car. One man was shot. He's now recovering. Right now, we do not know if the shootings are related. Police ask anyone with information on either incident to contact Crime Stoppers at 866-371-TIPS. We're learning more about a deadly crash in North City. Police tell us a 29-year-old man died after he was hit by a car at Hall Street and Adelaide Avenue. It happened just after 12.30 this morning. The driver says the man was in the road when he was struck. This is the latest in a string of deadly crashes. At least a dozen people have been killed in crashes in the city this year alone. Right now, St. Louis police are considering whether to have officers work 11-hour days instead of 8-hour days. 
They are considering a few options of how this could work. The department says it's all about making sure there's enough officers on the street. Shift changes would require approval from the Board of Aldermen because it would involve changing the officer's pay structure. Missouri Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft is running in the GOP primary for governor, and yesterday he earned a major endorsement. The St. Louis Ethical Society of Police says it's endorsing Ashcroft for governor. The Secretary of State told political editor Mark Maxwell it's largely to do with his support of a state takeover of the city police department. The local government is not doing the, their own responsibility. It's just like the border. When the federal government is not doing its job to enforce the law at the border, states have to step in and do it. When St. Louis City is not doing its job to make sure that the people of this state and the city don't have to live in fear, then it's incumbent upon the state to step in. You can catch more of Mark's interview with Secretary Ashcroft on this week's episode of The Record that airs Sunday night after Sports Plus. The second annual 420 Fest is underway at the Del Mar Loop. The street festival kicked off at 11 a.m. and Del Mar has been blocked off all day for the event. There's live music, painting and small business pop-ups lining the street. The event makes for a great boost in sales and exposure for local vendors. One vendor tells us they came back this year just because of her success last year. Eventually, I want to have a store. Um, so this kind of gives you the exposure and this event is actually one of my better ones. Like I make, I do really well at this event. The loop is packed for this event. 420 Fest ends tonight at 7 o'clock. Any crawl will have more on the event tonight on 5 on your side at 10 o'clock. A foreign bill passes in the house. Why some area leaders aren't happy about it. The state of Illinois is budgeting for thousands of new students, how an influx of migrants is shaping the education budget.